<laughs> Good morning. Today is February 24th, 2020. It is cold in Lancashire. Hi, I'm Jen. This is Jen Tickles. Welcome if you're new and because I've had a few. And hi, if you're coming back. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, it is chilly here. I don't like to be cold. I won't lie. It's true. I do not like to be cold. Ah! Let's get our coffee open and kick this off. So, how was your weekend? Was it good? My weekend from when I spoke to you last, which was Thursday, um, was really good. Well, it was good <laughs> in that um, I maintained my 2.8 pounds of weight loss. Yay! Q crowd cheering. Um, yeah, so, oh, and I'm wearing these glasses because I had somebody who was new, hi Alicia, um, mail me and say, could I switch, like, where I was doing it because you couldn't see my eyes because there was a reflection, so I don't know if this is even helping, but these yesterday when I did a tester, they seemed to be better, so you, there wasn't as much reflection on my reading glasses, although you can see it right now, that's my monitor. So you can see reflection from there but yeah hopefully it's not when I look this way it's not as bad as it was I can't do anything else about it because the light in here is just absolutely not good so in case you didn't hear that I lost 2.8 pounds um this it's really funny because I actually lost more than that um I actually lost 3.4 pounds when I got on the scale on Friday and it said I'd lost a total of 3.4 pounds. And I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that really created fuel inside my mind to do a lot of exercising this weekend and, you know, get myself going. Um, I had a vegetarian sub from Subway this week. And, and we did do our Thursday order in. And yesterday was um, a regular... Uh, Navy diet breakfast and lunch and then for dinner I marinated in a little bit of barbecue sauce some chicken Ian sliced it last night and I just put it in the pan to sear it basically because searing adds flavor you'd be really surprised how much flavor searing something does for for a meat and um, whether it's chicken or fish or pork um, yeah it really does help um, Sorry, I was going to try not to say that word. Anywho, <laughs> so I did that last night for dinner. Um, yesterday for lunch, like I said, I had regular Navy diet stuff. Ian, I think, had been hankering for bacon and eggs and beans on toast. So that's what he got. Um, he got some Tiger Bread toast and... Uh, he, he ate four rashers yesterday. I wouldn't want to be him when he gets on the scale tomorrow because tomorrow's the day that he gets on the scale. I wouldn't want to be him. Holy crap, holy. That is a lot of rashers. So I had um I had an apple yesterday for a snack. Oh. Yeah. I had a piece of dry toast for breakfast because I just was feeling very out of sorts. The weather, when the weather changes, my head starts to ache and yeah. Saturday was a very busy day for us. Um, I exercised and um, I'm finding all of these different types of podcasts to watch. Um, I'm rocking and I don't know why I'm rocking. Uh, no. If I turn to the corner and start talking to myself, please somebody call 999. Um, anyway, I think that, by the way, is a comfort mechanism because it's cold out and my head really aches, so I'm like trying to comfort myself by rocking. Anyway, uh, where was I? Yeah, so Saturday was a really busy day. We, um, we went over to Pendle Village instead of going up to Boundary Mills. We went to Pendle Village. We got the netting, the sheer netting, for the big front window downstairs. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of curtains were made this weekend. Um, and that was pretty much all the sewing that got done this weekend. Now, I, I'm going to bring Hagrid in in a little while because something did get done at Thursday, Friday, except for buttonholes. So I'm going to be showing you that. And there's a little bit of hand sewing 
on it, but Hagrid is proudly displaying it right now, and I can't wait to show you. Um, so, anyways, we were really busy on Saturday. There was a lot of, a lot of exercise, and I was very depressed when I got on the scale on Sunday after I'd done all this exercise and ran around and walked for, I probably walked three miles on Saturday. It felt like it anyway. There were a lot of stairs. And, um, it said I gained weight. And I was, like, in such a huff. Not an angry huff. I was just, like, to Ian, I was like, how did that happen? Now it looks like I've only lost 1.8 pounds on the week. And then I was, you know, at the same time I'm saying this out loud to Ian, I'm thinking to myself, wow, Jenny, hello, you lost 1.8 pounds this week. What is your problem well because I've made so much progress I kind of built this thing up in my mind I was so excited to talk to you guys today and say oh my god I've lost three more pounds and I thought I can't do that now and I'm so disappointed because I don't want these people who watch me every week to think holy fuck woman up down up down up down but I think one that's all part of being on a plan and two who cares I had still lost 1.8 pounds but fortunately, it was a lot of water weight, I think. And I got on the scale this morning and it told me good things. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm making progress. I feel like I'm kind of stuck at this number that I'm at or in the region of. So I really want to... Sorry, I've got like a little jagged bit on my nail. It's driving me freaking mad. Um, I really want to get past that number again because I mean obviously there was a massive struggle at the one before and I was starting to get really depressed so anyway so yeah I'd really like to get past that now in line with that there are a couple things the first thing is when we went into our regular shop yesterday for the week you know to get all of our mandarins and our cottage cheese and you know everything else we needed um I struggled because it has been in the past seven weeks that by the way this is star week eight uh in the past seven weeks on a sunday we have gone in and gotten ourselves a treat when we go in and then we have kind of this big deal lunch on sunday and um sort of a one last hurrah before we kick into the three days again and when i walked in and i looked at that section of little i went no no you came in for the list that's on your phone and that is what you're getting and it was I was actually mentally breaking down which just goes to show how addicting food is or how I have no willpower <laughs> or whatever it is but it's so hard sometimes so I was in the grocery store but I did really well. I didn't buy one thing. The biggest thing that I bought that I did not put on my list was we've been getting these little bottles of wine. I think it's South African wine, which basically have two glasses worth of wine in. And we've been having a glass of wine on a Saturday night, which is unusual for us because I can go months without even taking a drink. But it's just been a nice thing in the winter, I think. And, um, so I bought a bottle of red this time because we always get white because I, I hate red wine. And I know it's a thing not to warm up or cool down your red wine, but I have to have it cold or I can't drink it. I just can't stomach it. So we got a little two glass bottle of red wine, but that was it. Um, we did have to get a giant bag of crisps because Ian does have them on Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with his lunch normally. And we were nearly out, but we, the last bag of crisps we bought was before Christmas. So if that's any indicator about how pared down our diet is, yeah, because before the Navy diet, even though I wasn't eating a ton of food, I wasn't eating very healthy and I was having a bag of crisps every day with my lunch. And no, I'm not, I'm not. Jesus, it's still really dark out. It is 8.09 and it's still that dark. It's bad. 
Um, so yeah. So, and the next thing I want to talk about is my daughter-in-law, Emily. Now I asked her birthday isn't until April 4th, but it's always so hard to get a freaking answer out of this girl. When you say, Hey, Ed, it's me, just mom want to know what you'd like for your birthday. And it takes a fucking act of God <laughs> to get her to tell you anything. Well, this year, I was on the phone. We were having a, a video chat with Joe and the kids and I'm. And I said to Joe, I said, could you please ask your wife what she'd like for a birthday this year and tell her not to muck me about. And then she says, tea towels. Well, that's a big joke with me because I ask for tea towels every year for Christmas because I go through them. I use tea towels a lot, and which are kitchen towels. Um, I use them a lot. And um, yeah, so they got me some nice uh, kitchen towels, tea towels that at Marks and Sparks, Marks and Spencers that match my kitchen walls, which is what I asked for. And Joe picked them out and they were perfect. And so it's a big gag. Mom always asks for tea towels. Get mom tea towels. If nothing else, get mom tea towels. Oh, yes, please buy me tea towels. Um, but this year, Emily said, Hey, I would really like a cookbook. And I went, Okay. Well, all her friends have this cookbook I guess and she said could I please have that and I went okay so it is called a pinch of nom I looked in this book and I saw things that I didn't believe could possibly be the amount of calories that they're saying they are like a Yorkshire pudding wrap is 281 calories per serving. Ugh, look at that. It's got beef in it. It's, it's, it's a Yorkshire pud and it's 281 calories for the whole meal. There is all sorts campfire stew, Cajun dirty rice. Pizza stuffed chicken. Who doesn't like a curry? Do you see how many calories is in that curry? That is it. Gives you the recipe and all the nutritional information. Not to mention the pictures in this freaking book are lush. But um, when I saw that one, I saw this one. And this one's the everyday light. Now, I'm really sorry. I mean, the front cover, inside the front cover is just, like, really nice. I just like the layouts of them. I like, there's a whole section for bakes and roast, snacks, sides, and sweet treats. Ew. 212. Oh, my God, there's quesadilla in here. Nutritional info. So, nutritional info. It's all in the back. It shows you how to batch cook. I don't even know if that's focusing. It's like my camera's decided to fart out. <sighs> I don't know. I really want to buy this. It's amazing. So I picked this up on Amazon for $9.99 and the other one as well. So these two books were $9.99 each. So I hope Emily enjoys them because, yeah, worth the money. Oh, I flipped my watch around. Ravenclaw. If you are new and you've never seen, it's a watch that keeps time. And Ravenclaw is obviously my house, as you can see behind me and all over the board behind me right so i am um, right so the first thing is thank you helen very much for gifting me some patterns i really appreciate that i really want to make that shawl and i really want to make that sweater i got so much shit on the go right now let me know if you're making that shawl kim I'm going to email you because I need some advice about quilting issue that I've got that I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do about. And I need some expert advice, so I shall be contacting you. Um, right, so purchases. 
I bought a bag and some wool from Helen. Helen, I also need to talk to you. Um, the wool that I bought from you, I'm thinking of getting a bunch of that in DK and asking you, sending it to you and asking you to dye it in those green speckles um, because I would really like a sweater out of that with green speckles. So, but if you're not up to it, it's cool. It's cool, just say, Jen, I'm tired and I don't wanna do it. I'm cool with that. Hi, I'm back. So Hagrid has got on this top from the closet. It's M7470. I made the A, which is right here. I didn't put the pockets on because I didn't like them. But yeah, it's done. Um, the, oh, sorry. The cuffs are on with all of the, I don't know if you can even really see the pleats and the slits and I need to do the buttonholes which I'm really scared about but the sleeves are done I think it came out okay there's a little bit of puckering on the sleeves but screw it I can wear a top over it I'm gonna have to figure out how to make my sleeves fit better into my pattern as I'm sewing it and yeah there is some wrinkling on the back sorry about that but then there's the the pucker pleat here in the middle it is taken in on the side so there is some shaping and some shaping in the back as well as you can see here and here but yeah fits nice over the bottom and yeah so a little like i said a little bit of trouble with the ease in the shoulders but again there's never really going to be a time in northern lancashire where i will be wearing this without a sweater anyway but yeah so i am i pleased I am, except I think the sleeves kind of ruined it for me. So I am, like I said, I am going to have to figure out how to uh, take care of that in future. Whether we make it bigger on the side and use the same sleeve or whatever. But I am going to be taking some notes on a hard copy note and slipping it into the pattern to remind myself. But yeah, it's okay. Because I've cut that pattern and I didn't cut a pattern from the pattern, I probably won't use that one again anyway because I'm hoping I'll be a lot thinner the next time I make it. But yeah, I'm going to try to get the buttons done this week on it. But it's just buttons, so this will be the last time you see it until I wear it. So anyway, thank you Hagrid. It was very nice of you to show up today, buddy. Old pal. <laughs> Alright, we'll be right back. Hello, I'm back. My watch keeps flipping. All right. Um, so there was no progress on the cross stitch this weekend, and there really wasn't a lot of knitting because basically we were busy doing stuff to the house together, and some really good stuff actually. And I feel really happy about it, like I talked about before. Plus, there were some lighting fixtures exchanged, and just you know general housey stuff but I won't bore you with that oh and the new fencing is going up that was a job and a half won't talk about that because there was a bit of an argument outside <laughs> yeah just not talking about it this is me not talking about it <laughs> so anyway let's put a picture up here of the infamous uh, goldfish memory shawl that's it and I did get a little bit more of the uh, uh, lace section done. Not a ton. I'm only about one-fourth of the way. Sorry, I've got tangled yarn here. Uh, I'm about one-fourth of the way through. Sorry, my ear. The, uh, this, this section. So I need to work harder at it. I just didn't really want to do it this weekend. So there you go. It's a little... A little bit easier to see it now um but yeah and that'll all block out it'll look good but it's, this thing is gonna be so massive just it's gonna just be huge i need to get my glue gun out and make some stoppers for the bottom of my needles but yeah so this is what it is so far this is it there we go that's the end 
Anyway, I really do like it. It is a nice project to work on because I know I'm going to love the finished object. But yeah. I'm just not looking forward to all of this stuck in it I have to do for this. get a little bit more done on the Hildema ends. Um, I think I showed you guys this last week, but this is the first one. This is in uh, Sprite 966 Creations uh, DK weight, which is a merino nylon mix. It is lush and it's called Olive U. And it is really nice. <laughs> it's just, oh my god, it's so fun. Anyway, so I did get a little bit farther. I did make a mistake and I had to uh, uh, tear back five rows, four rows. I can't remember because I put the thumb in the same position that I put it in on this mitten. And obviously it needs to be on the opposite side. So, yeah. So, any hoot, this is what I've got done so far. This is so quick. I don't know why I just don't have it done already. But you can see the increase, decrease, or the increase for the thumb gusset there. If I hold it back, you can kind of see it better. Like, oops, sorry, right here. Um, I don't think I pulled my stitches taut enough. Hopefully it will um, block out. But yeah, there's not that much farther to go before I can put some um, the stitches on some waste yarn. And then, oops, sorry. And then that will be ready to go. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I got the kimono. Uh, yeah, I'll show it to you on Thursday. I got that kimono all cut out. I just have to put the markings on the pieces. And that will be all done. My main objective this morning is to get my ironing done. Because I have like seven shirts to iron. And get that done. Um, my objective this afternoon is to read how to use the new button holder on this machine because it's different to my other machine. And yeah, so that should be fun. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, I'm gonna get that kimono mark because I am so keen to have that. The one thing I did notice and didn't notice as it were <laughs> was that it asked for uh, bias binding on it. And I don't have any that is blue. I don't. The only color I have is green, basically, in a binding. So what I'm going to do instead of that, because it's basically just to help the neck line, you know, sew around the neck and down the front, hold its shape. So I'm going to replace the binding with some very lightweight interfacing cut at the same width. And that way I can just fold it over and it will do the same thing. And frankly, it'll probably be easier to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the lightweight interfacing. I don't know. If you give me a second, I will grab it. So there's interfacing. Interfacing, if you don't sew, has different weights. There's some heavier interfacing, which is more for like if you're making a project bag um, and you don't want to put the fleeced uh, fusible interfacing in. Um, and that keeps makes it keep the stiffness, the fabric retains a stiffness or gains a stiffness as it were. But this is a very light um, fusible interfacing. And by fusible, I mean there's like a, a glue. If you can see the little shine, you see the shine on it. So on this side, there ain't no shine. But on this side, there is. And that's like a tacky glue that actually this adhesive... Um, attaches itself to the fabric when you iron over it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that um, as much of a continuous piece as I can in one go and place that a quarter inch in on each side of, you know, on the, the neck area. I'm not explaining this very well, right? And then I'm gonna fuse that then I'm going to fold over the quarter inch and fold it over again. So we're basically going to have a quarter inch and a three eighths inch um, fold over. And uh, that will give us our, our stability here on the front. I'll show you how I did it. I might take some video so you all can see. But this 
has gone on for so long that I this is the longest one I think I've ever done so I'm really sorry about that the video I mean um at least I just jumped from one thing to another didn't I that's me that's what I do but I have some ironing to do so I need to get to it <laughs> my husband's probably emailed I need to get to him too but I hope you're okay I'm really interested in what's going on with everybody and would like to see some more comments in the bottom below give me a thumbs up so other people can find me that seems to be working a little bit um but yeah um i look forward to talking to everybody and answering your questions or your comments and i guess wish me luck i wish you luck for the week i will see you again on thursday and we'll see how we get on so just do it stick to it you can do it <laughs> i will see you guys later take care of yourselves have a great week bye